Good morning. Um, I am a medical physicist, imaging scientist. I work in extracting information from images, and my um, the mouse. Yeah. And my collaborator, uh, Juan G, is a biostatistician working in the field of uh, genomics. Um, we're working with the TCGA Breast Phenotype Research Group on extracting information from the MR images. Uh, unfortunately, Juan G came down ill today. However, Yatan Zhu is in the audience. Um, and we have three posters on this. So this is the uh, um, breast phenotype research group. It includes various um, image analysis and genomic folks, NCI, as well as radiologists from around the country that have worked with these images. And our purpose is to demonstrate using this data set the role of quantitative radiomics in characterizing the molecular subtypes of breast cancer and associating that with genomic data. We come from a history of, com of research in computer-aided diagnosis where we've ex used computer vision techniques to extract out the information and then based on uh, clinical information, uh, create the knowledge to aid in diagnosis or prognosis of the patient and now using it in data mining. A few definitions. So radiomics is the high throughput conversion of images to mineable data, and radiogenomics or imaging genomics is the association of these features with genomics and other omics data. So we're interested in asking questions about the relationship seen in these clinical medical images that are obtained routinely in practice and their relationship with the biology of cancer. We want to know which correlate, which complement to potentially lead to personalized screening and personalized treatment. Uh, most of you are in this area, in, 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 and what we're interested in is incorporating this radiomics part into the association and predictive model development. So this is our computer-aided diagnostic workstation, which is now our high-throughput MRI phenotyping system. Once the lesion is identified, the computer automatically segments the lesion and pulls out the various phenotypes. Um, this is our data set. We work with the breast cancer cases from the TCGA, where clinical histopathology and genomic data is downloaded using TCGA assembler and molecular subtyping and risk recurrent values were obtained from the Peru lab at UNC. Um, in this data set, there were only at the time 91 cases that had imaging data. More are being collected. This is the distribution of those cases. Uh, many are, uh, well, are ER positive, PR positive, HER2 negative, and most are not triple negative thus. Most of them are luminal A and the cancer molecular subtype. And from these cases, we downloaded the breast MRI images and did the computational image analysis phenotyping. Let me take a few moments to talk about breast MRI. Since tumors have the increased blood vessels and differ in microvascular density and vessel permeability, um, we can look at the, we can obtain MR images over time after injection of a gadolinium contrast agent. So here we have a pre-contrast, a post-contrast, and a subtraction, and you can see the tumor is highlighted. We do this analysis in 4D. That is, across, as we inject the contrast, we continue to image, and we can obtain data in 3D, so 4D analysis. Most of the figures I'm showing will be a slice, but the analysis is done in 4D. What we're interested in is looking at this uptake. So if it's high, uptake is quick and the washout is quick, chances are it's a cancerous lesion, whereas other ones might be more persistent or plateau. Doesn't mean they're not cancerous, but likely not. So the first step we do is to segment the tumor. Here examples are two cases, and in red are the computer segmented lesions. To better give you an idea what this is, this is a 3D breast MRI. This is a clinically obtained uh, um, breast image. Uh, you can see right here is the um, uh, tumor. And so this is, we indicate that tumor to the computer. The computer then does the segmentation. Within that segmented region, we are looking at 
uh, characteristics of the tumor, both around the margin as well as distribution of uptake within the tumor. And we're calling this a virtual biopsy. Note here, we can analyze the entire tumor relative to real biopsy. We're doing it non-invasively, non so we can repeat it over time, and we can spatially know wh where we're looking at as opposed to a uh, surgical biopsy where uh, you're not quite sure where the needle's going in. Um, and so we hope to correlate between the two. Once we have that lesion, we then can extract out multiple phenotypes. So we can look at size, volume, maximum linear size, surface area. We look at the shape of the tumor, the sphericity or how irregular the shape is. We look at the sharpness of the margin of the tumor um, and other features. And based on the uptake, because this is dynamically obtained contrast enhanced MRI, we look at the enhancement heterogeneity and kinetics of the uptake and washout. For example, here, this is a slice through one of the tumors, and each, at each of those voxels, we can look at the uptake over time. And you see that there's curves on the right very greatly, and that's the heterogeneity of the uptake within the tumor. So what we do is we look at, at one point in time, how that differs. And we're interested in relating the heterogeneity that we're seeing in the imaging from the angiogenesis to the heterogeneity that you are seeing in the analysis of cancer in, in the genomics at different locations within the tumor. So we can look at the texture, and we do various uh, computer vision texture analysis methods. We look at the uptake and washout, and we look at the variance of that. And those um, are given as our various phenotypes of our non-invasive virtual biopsy. So in the, in the TCIA breast group, we're relating these computer extracted phenotypes to various um, uh, tasks. For example, uh, for clinical tumor status, here we show the surface area extracted by the computer relative to stage, and we see that it is predictive of breast cancer tumor stage. Um, we can look at it relative to molecular classification and cancer type subtype. For example, we've shown that um, E, on this limited data set that ER negative breast cancers tended to have larger size, a more irregular shape, and were more heterogeneous in terms of the contrast enhancements. For triple negative, they tended to have a more irregular shape and more heterogeneous in terms of the contrast enhancement. Um, what happened? Oh. Okay, not sure what happened, but okay. Um, we also compare this to the molecular subtype, and here we're showing that the enhancement texture of the tumor heterogeneity appears to be predictive of molecular subtype. And here at the bottom, we show normal like luminal A, luminal B, HER2 enriched, and basal life ba uh, breast cancers. Um, and as you go across the graph, it gets uh, the prognosis is, is worse. And this was a statistical trend. Now, in our analyses, and we realize that the tumor size is very important, so we try to control for that, and we still see this enhancement texture of the tumor uh, heterogeneity being predictive of the molecular subtype, um, as shown here, where the plot on the left are for very small tumors, and the one on our right is two centimeters to five centimeters. We've also related these to the risk of recurrence from multi-gene assays to, from Chuck Grew's lab at UNC. Here's an example of two cancers. Um, the one on the left is one of a good prognostic case, and one on the poor is a poor prognostic case. Um, these were analyzed with um, the research Oncotype DX, Mammoprint, and the PAM50 tests, as well as um, our radiomics looking at tumor size, or tumor shape irregularity, and the heterogeneity of the uptake. And I know you can't read this, but I put this up only again to, sh to show that um, we are finding statistically significant correlation, and the same types of features are, are, are being shown again, tumor size, irregularity, and uptake um, uh, heterogeneity. I'm not sure. Okay. We can also present this in terms of ROC analysis in looking at good prognosis versus poor prognosis for these various research gene assays. Um, and the black curve here on the upper right of the um, ROC analysis 
is the performance of these, comp these computer-extracted tumor signatures in terms of predicting poor and, um, and um, not so poor um, uh, prognostics. And then ultimately, we can relate these phenotypes to genomic pathways. One thing I want to point out is that while we're, we're pushing imaging to see as much as we can, what, what we can see from just the imaging alone. It's not that we would just use imaging. Ultimately, we want to see if we can merge imaging with genomics and other features to come up with a better um, prognostic signature. Um, also, we want to ultimately correlate our imaging signatures, our virtual biopsy signatures with actual biopsies so that we could um, non-invasively follow a patient over time during therapy um, and also spatially correlate that information. So moving on to the genomic pathways, um, here um, the data was extracted from the TCGA using the, the TCGA assembler software again, and we used the imaging data from um, the MRIs. Um, uh, we looked at genetic pathways associated with the radiomic uh, phenotypes, regression analysis was done, as was clustering analysis. So in the exploratory cluster analysis of the MR phenotypes, significant associations were found between these radiomic features and the clinical outcomes, as shown earlier. And um, however, this was done using the typical genomic clustering methods, treating the MR phenotype as another phenotype. Um, there various associations were shown with the MR uh, phenotypes and various pathway transcriptional activities, and I will list uh, the posters where this is shown in more detail at the end of the talk. Um, here red is pos high positive correlation and dark green is, um, and light green is the uh, high negative associations. Um, we also identified significant associations, in particularly the size phenotype, very strong, related to various gene expressions of pathways. And this enhancement texture heterogeneity phenotypes were related, again, to the MRI RNA expression. So the same phenotypes, based looking at them from different ways, keep um, appearing. So in summary, Computational quantitative MRI analysis shows promise as a means for high-throughput image-based phenotyping and appears to predict a breast cancer molecular subtypes. Radiomics of tumor size and enhancement heterogeneity appear as dominant phenotypes in classifying these subtypes and risk of recurrence, and significant associations were identified between the phenotypes um, and molecular features involved in multiple regulation layers. A main limitation is that there are only um, 91 breast MRI cases, even though there's 1,000 breast cancers in the TCGA. Uh, TCIA is collecting additional images, and we're also organizing, outside of that, a multi-institutional radiomics network to, co to collect cases. For example, at my institution, we've collected 800 breast cancer cases with MRI, and now we're trying to, and we're collecting the pathology and, if possible, the genomics on them to validate these promising features. Identification of radiomics of molecular subtypes of breast tumors is expected to allow for these virtual biopsies to augment actual biopsies, and ongoing research involves relating and merging the MR phenotypes with genomic data to develop improved predictive uh, models. i like to end with these questions. Is it possible to decide targeted therapy based on imaging and genomics association results? Can imaging features inform important genomic features? Not in this work, in prior work that we've done, we've, in, in, in the assessment of future risk of breast cancer, we've used imaging and um, uh, other uh, genomic association results to uh, direct the analysis as opposed to going to GWAS so to improve the statistics. Can integration of imaging and genomic features lead to a higher power in prediction? And can imaging serve as a virtual biopsy, being non-invasive, covering the complete tumor, and being repeatable? 
I'd like to thank you and uh, reference a workshop of the TCIA here on imaging resources for the TCGA. That's today at 4 and 5, and posters 91, 79, and 105. Thank you. And thank you for excellent talk. Uh, just two notes. One, um, radiogenomic right now is used by two groups. Effect of radiation on genome yes. and genes and also uh, the radiomic and gen genomic uh, combination. Uh, it needs just somehow clarification when we, we are using one term and we are coining actually one term. Uh, it's better to be uh, more precise. I, I totally agree mm -hmm. with your usage. I, in my opinion, uh, radiogenomic more uh, imply radiomic and genomic, but there are other opinion also out there. And the second one is that uh, radiomic in particular is able to capture the heterogeneity in the tumor. And what we have at the moment, at least, is just one snapshot of the genomic. Uh, many times when you are going to uh, integrate the heterogeneity captured by radiomic with just one mm, sample uh, and the genomic sequencing, th there will be a mismatch and how you are going to handle that. We don't have that ability at the moment at least. Well, first off, I completely agree with you on both points. One, I actually, uh, the radiomics, I agree with that term. Radiogenomics, actually I prefer saying imaging genomics because of that confusion, because there are the other folks where radiogenomics is looking at more of the changes based on the radiation. So I completely agree that name is sticking, but I will go back to pushing for imaging genomics. And I also agree on your second point, and that's exactly why we want to take the imaging data where we can get complete coverage of the tumor we realize that the genomics is based on maybe one or two biopsies only, and that the genomic heterogeneity is slightly different to the imaging um, heterogeneity that we're seeing, but we need to relate them. So uh, I have a slide, I didn't put it in. It's, it's my um, proposal, which I'm um, uh, uh, pressing for, is that we, we can do whole mount pathology. So instead of the small slide, when there's a mastectomy, we have a slide this big, and it's kind of like a slice through the breast, where you have the parenchyma and the tumor. And what we want to do is spatially orientated multi-omics relationships, because at that point, yes, we can do our, our, we can capture the entire tumor with imaging. Right now, you can't do that. It's a partial picture with the genomics, but with the whole mouth comparison, and what we will do is then you could do complete genomics through the tumor, and you can then spatially relate it to the MRI. In fact, I almost put that slide in. I, I, I did not ask him to ask these two questions, but those are the perfect two questions I would want someone to ask me. And that will help answer that problem of the, because once we understand for the cases that we do get the entire breast, not only can we look at the tumor we can do virtual biopsy on the stroma around it. And that's very, and we want, and that's very important. So we're setting up this whole mount pathology lab to precisely do that. And once we can understand that relationship, then for cases where we don't get the complete tumor, we can hopefully rely on what we're seeing in the images and then do it repeatedly over time during treatment. Uh, I, I just want to add that right now by, uh, by the facilities, by image-guided uh, biopsies and intervention, we have the ability to have the tissue sample from the exact location which we uh, know in the image. And if you want to just correlate the texture or whatever of that special location uh, to the genes, it's possible. And interventional oncology can, can really provide a, a very good platform for this endeavor. Thank you. Yes, we, we've done that with the breast cancer and also prostate cancer. Just look, we're looking at that. Thanks. Thank you. So if you have images of some of your cases and you'd like to collaborate, please let me know.
So thank you to all the speakers from this morning's session. Um, I do have one request. If you are a speaker in the afternoon session, if you can please come up here um, right after I finish speaking. We'd like to talk to you for a second. Um, also, we will have lunch now on your own. Posters start at 1 o'clock, and we'll start back promptly at 2 o'clock with session 2. Thank you, everybody.